It's certainly possible if you use Exchange Online and Microsoft 365 that your account might have been hacked or maybe one of the users in your organization has and you need to somehow fix that problem. So I'm going to show you how to do that if you're using Exchange Online. Here's the website that you want to take a look at and I'll put it in the comments so you can click on it as well. So once you're in this particular website, which is really just admin.microsoft.com, but then it opens up this compromised account uh, tool. So you go ahead and put in the email address of the compromised email right here where it says, what's the email of the affected user? And then you're going to click run tests. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through several tests. This may take a couple of minutes. And it's going to let you know if it finds anything suspicious, any types of suspicious activity where it believes that your particular account has been hacked. So in my case, it says that here are the key findings. Now I put in a real type of email, but it's a, just a test email. And you can see that it found a lot of different issues, such as warning me that the email account may have been redirected. So it has this delegate rule that's allowing someone else to actually have a rights to this particular email. So we should go ahead and fix that. I'm going to show you that how to, how to do that in just a minute. And then we have the specified user account was present in all these roles. So you may want to remove all these different roles that the user has. And once again, I'll I'll show you how to do that as well. In my case, this particular user is an exchange administrator, security administrator, all those kinds of things. If the user that is being affected or may have been hacked should not be these administrators, then you need to remove those particular roles. Also, it sees some legacy protocols. Most people don't use POP3 or IMAP anymore. These are not considered secure, so you're going to want to turn those off. So here are some of the recommendations, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Exchange Online and then we're going to take a look at how to fix each of these issues. So the first thing we want to do is reset this user's password. So I opened up another one of these admin.microsoft.com just so we don't lose our progress. And I'm going over to where it says users. So I'll expand users, active users. And here's a list of all my different test accounts I use to make various different uh, videos. And I'm going to go down to my particular user. There's the user. And now I can click on Reset Password. And it takes me to this new page where I can type in the old password and create new passwords from right here. Now you can also do this at Entra ID, which you can get to at portal.azure.com and click on the Entra icon or just go to entra.microsoft.com and then click on the user and reset the password there as well. After resetting the password, you can see the next step is to remove any forwarding addresses set at the mailbox level. Now, it hasn't detected that I have any forwarding addresses. However, it's just reminding me that I should go in and check that. So I'm going to go into the Exchange Admin Center at admin.exchange.microsoft.com, just like you see here at the top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my account and I'm going to check to see if there's any email forwarding. So I'll click on email forwarding and fortunately it does not have any. So I am compliant in this area. So that's step two. So that's good. Remove any suspicious inbox rules set within the mailbox. I've switched over to Outlook on the web, and you can get there by going to outlook.office.com. And you can also find this in the Outlook application, but it's a little bit easier to demonstrate this showing the web version. So what I'm going to do is in the upper right-hand corner, I'm going to click on the settings gear, and then I'm going to type, because there's a lot of different settings here, I'm going to type rules. And I'll click on inbox rules. Now, if you see any rules here that shouldn't be here that maybe the hacker is set up, then you can go ahead and delete those rules. So good news for me, I don't have any rules set. But if you see any there and they shouldn't be, then you should go ahead and delete them. You should also go to the Defender portal at security.microsoft.com, and you can see the path, email, collaboration, review, restricted users. If the user is on the list, select that user and choose Unblock. I'm just going to click on this link, which just takes me directly there. Open that up and we'll just take a look and see if there are any restricted users. 
Good news, my accounts are not in the restricted users or restricted entities. So what that basically means is that if Exchange Online uh, detects that there are a lot of suspicious types of activities that are going on, then it will go ahead and temporarily block that user. So you can go in and take a look at what that user is up to. And then once you feel that that issue has been remediated, then you can go ahead and unblock them in this particular site. So once again, you can either click on the security link and then go to this section, or you can just click directly on the link that says forward slash restricted users. So step four is good. Now we're on to step five. The next thing would be to remove the user account from any administrative role groups until you're confident that the account is no longer compromised. And we can see when I scroll up all the different types of user account roles that this user has. So in order to go in and delete those temporarily, then what you can do is you can copy this list off to Notepad, and then you can go back to the Exchange Admin Center, which once again is admin.exchange.microsoft.com. And then you can go over to the left-hand side where it says roles. And underneath roles, you've got a couple of different types of roles. You have admin roles and user user roles. So based on what that list said, you can go through all these different roles and go ahead and remove the user from those roles, at least temporarily. So I'm going to take one of the roles that was on that list, which is compliance management and select it. And then I'll go to assigned. And then I can go ahead and check the box and choose delete and delete that user from that role. And I would go through each one of those different roles that was in this list until they were removed from all of them. Now, you're probably not going to see that many roles for the average user. But if that user is an administrator, then you may see a lot of different roles. So now we need to go into removing the legacy protocols uh, that are enabled for the mailbox. So let's go back to our Exchange Admin Center and do that. I'm back in the Exchange Admin Center, and I'll go ahead and select my user once again. In the lower right-hand corner, you can see Manage Email App Settings, and there's a link there which I'll select. And here I can go in and I can uh, disable anything that I don't want. So IMAP is gone and POP3 is now gone. So now that IMAP and POP3 are disabled, you may be asking, well, how do we do this for all users? Because none of our users need to use IMAP or POP3. Well, you'll have to connect to Exchange Online, and there is a PowerShell commandlet in order to do that. You can Google that very quickly and be able to do that within just a couple of minutes. But if you want to do it one email box at a time, you can do it this way using the graphical user interface that you saw there. Let's go back to our home page. And now you can see we've come to the end of the recommendations that we need to do in order to get our mailbox back under our control. So how do we know if our account has been compromised? Let's take a look at that. Here's a list of some of the different ways that you know that your mailbox or a mailbox that a user has that you control has had their email compromised, such as a suspicious activity where you have missing or deleted email. That may not be something in itself that could be a problem, and you can certainly recover that email from a backup or the recovery button in Outlook if you need to. But uh, if you are missing the email even from there as well, then it's certainly possible it might have been deleted without your approval. And then users receiving email from the compromised account with the out the corresponding email in the sender's sent folders. A big one would be inbox rules that weren't created by the user or admin. So when you went into those inbox rules, if you saw rules that you or the user did not create, then you know that there's an issue. The user's display name is changed in the global address list. So make sure that it's accurate. Even if it's off by a little bit, then that could be uh, some sort of compromise that has happened. The user's mailbox is blocked from sending mail. Well, if that user has been detected in the Exchange Admin Center as possibly being suspicious, then it's going to go ahead and block that email box from being able to send anything. And once again, you can go back to security.microsoft.com as I demonstrated, and you can see if it's been blocked. Here are some more symptoms of compromise. The sent or deleted items folders and Outlook or Outlook on the web, the web version I was just showing you, contain messages for compromised accounts, such as I'm stuck in London, send money, you know, those types of things. Now, of course, a user would have to be aware of those types of emails and seeing those by clicking around in some of those. And that might, might not always happen. So that might be a difficult ask for a user to check. Unusual profile changes. So if you see a difference in the name, telephone number, or 
postal code, those types of things, uh, then that may indicate compromise. Multiple and frequent password changes, those only an admin would see and they would see those in the logs unless you set up a special alert to alert you that passwords have been changed often. The user may also get a password changed email as well, but it really depends on how you set that up in Exchange. Mail forwarding was recently added and I showed you how to make sure that mail forwarding is deleted. Uh, unusual signatures were recently added as well, a fake banking signature or a prescription drug signature. All these things indicate a compromised mail account. So if you or one of your users has been hacked, hopefully this will help you gain control of that hacked account once again and get you back onto recovery.